Welcome to the Brookings United Church of Christ. Good to see you here all the, on this sunny, beautiful, continuing uh, spring morning, early spring. And so just wanted to start our worship service with a few announcements as we do each week that uh, Miss Peggy will share with us at this time. Good morning. Uh, we are hosting the Lenten Luncheon on March 13th at First Lutheran, is it not? Uh, if you haven't signed up yet, we need seven or eight volunteers to help with setup and serving and taking down uh, afterward to be there around 1030. Uh, Pastor Mark will be delivering the message. And the luncheon this week is broccoli cheese soup, chicken salad sandwich, cookie, and coffee. Cause of the month in conjunction with March being Women's History Month, we are collecting items on a list provided by the Domestic Abuse Shelter, and I think there are little flyers inside your bulletins. The list is on the offering table, and you can put items in the box below it. We will be collecting items through the month of March. Something to chew on is Wednesdays beginning, it says 6 o'clock in here. It is 6.30 with potluck. Uh, everyone is welcome. Uh, Coffee and Conversation, Tuesdays, 10.30 to 11.30, downtown location of Cottonwood Coffee. And there are some bulletins back on the offering table with what they are is they are informational bulletins for the daycare center here, and each one has a sticky note on it asking that they be deliver, delivered to certain places. So if you happen to go by any of those places and could pick up one of those little packets of bulletins and deliver them, we'd certainly appreciate it. And so would uh, the little gal that's uh, running the daycare. And she's also still looking for uh, volunteers, if at all possible. Are there any other announcements? Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> the lady in pink. Um, I just wanted to say about the daycare center. Um, if you can help out, uh, fill out the form. I did it last week and went and got fingerprinted. And um, it's not a permanent thing. It's not a full-time thing. It's not a anything. It's just anything we can do to help her out. Um, it may be a case of coming and rocking a baby for a couple hours. Everybody can do that. Um, just so she has some on-call people until she gets enough people hired and her numbers stop fluctuating. Because um, right now she has five babies. And it's a different deal when the babies are concerned. So hey, if you can help out, it's not hard, it takes 10 minutes, and we need her to make this work. So thank you for doing that, Jennifer, and thank, thank you for encouraging other people to say uh, not a big deal, to just go down to the social service office and, um, and to fill out you know, the, the form to be able to uh, volunteer. And uh, there's, as she said, there's this uh, need right now, and one of the things that she, she didn't mention is... Um, her uh, director's uh, daughter um, has, has just come down with leukemia. And so we've, she's lost uh, her, her director, and, and one other person ended up uh, leaving unexpectedly this week as well. So, um, yeah, now is, it, now is the time if you are able to sign up as a volunteer. Again, it just means that she might call you on a certain morning and say, hey, somebody hasn't shown up yet or somebody called in sick or something. Can you come in for three hours? You know, and you can say yes or no, but you can't say yes or no if she doesn't have you on the list and if you haven't gone through the background check ahead of time. So, And, and, and is still look, looking for, you know, again, yes, permanent, permanent, permanent employees as well, but she would also like to have um, a list of volunteers that she might be able to call on to fill in some gaps when needed. So thank you for 
thinking about that and considering that, if, if you are open to that, there are some forms that are on the side of the name tag um, holder over there. <laughs> so, uh, if there's nothing else, I will invite you all to stand as uh, Rachel leads us in this morning's uh, opening song of praise. It's You Never Let Go. standing for the call to worship this morning. Called to be branches in Christ's body. We yearn to be connected to the vine. Called to bear fruit and provide sustenance to God's creatures. 
Called to be growing in stature and likeness of Jesus. We seek to abide and remain in Christ, both now and in all lives. Please take this moment to greet your neighbors this morning. be seated. This is the time each week we lift up joys and concerns, uh, and the lady with the microphone will find you if you have something to share this morning. You can raise your hand. Um, I forgot when we were talking about the daycare, um, her director, Jamie, her daughter Elena is not even two years old and is now going through chemo for leukemia. So please keep her in your prayers. Yes. She thought that um, her, her daughter just had a cold or, or COVID or something that wasn't going away, went to the doctor and found out it's leukemia. So, yeah, let's keep her in our prayers. Others this morning. All right, <laughs> we do. We are. We have been. You know what? We've been incredibly uh, blessed this spring, uh, thanks to La Nina or El Nino or whoever's responsible. But uh, we'll take it. Yeah. And I want to lift up prayers of gratitude for our church and the people here. Um, we put out a call for the domestic abuse shelter, and um, I haven't been shopping yet, but somebody has. And um, just the generosity of the people of this church, even though we're small, we do big things. So thank you, everyone, and thank God for you. Yes, absolutely. And uh, so if you want to know the, the list of items they're looking for, it is um, right by the offering table there as, as well as uh, in your newsletter, but uh, yes, thank you for a, a great start to this, and we will deliver those um, at the end of the month here. So, others? All right, well, I would just, uh, I would just encourage us to uh, keep uh, the people of Gaza and the people of Ukraine in our prayers as we come to the Lord a moment of silent prayer, and I will lead us into the Lord's Prayer. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of this day, of the sunshine, and uh, just the warm weather, uh, Lord, and how we can just feel and see your presence all around us, especially with the promise of spring right around the corner, Lord. But we also recognize that uh, even as we gather in this place this, this morning, it's it's hard for us to, um, to grasp uh, the amount of... Um, violence and um, suffering uh, that's occurring um, on the other side of the earth, Lord, um, uh, among your people in Ukraine and, and, and the Gaza Strip right now, Lord, and we just pray, continue to pray for your presence to be um, in the midst of those situations, Lord. We pray for um, you to soften uh, the hardened hearts of, of those leaders who continue to perpetrate such acts of violence upon uh, such innocent people. And Lord, we just believe that that it, the only answer uh, is to uh, follow the teachings of your son Jesus, who we call the, the Prince of Peace, and to abide in, in him. And Lord, just to um, receive the power of your Holy Spirit that he, is, uh, that he promised to us this, in this life. And so, Lord, it is, uh, it is your son Jesus who gives us uh, the, 
power to not only change our own lives, but the power to, to change uh, the world through our words and through our actions and, and, and through our appeals. And so, Lord, uh, we just thank you for the gift of this gathering uh, today and for hearing all of the prayers that were spoken among your people as well as the prayer that we now pray together uh, as your people. The, a contemporary form of the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we say it together. Our Creator God, who reigns in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our da daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This time let's join together in singing hymn number 473, Blessed Assurance. Christ, the true vine, in our need we come to you in weakness, needing your strength, for we too easily become dry and lifeless without your life-giving spirit. Jesus Christ, the true vine, teach us to remain in you and so to find your life flowing in us, giving strength and vigor to our discipleship. And as we come closer to you, our lives are drawn closer to others. Our thoughts turn to images of violence we have seen on the news in places of fear and terror, to where people are in conflict over race, religion, land, and power. Our thoughts turn to people, power within our nation. May those who claim your name be connected to you in a way that makes, transform, makes and transforms their leadership to look more like you. Our thoughts turn to people in need in our church and community. Wherever hearts are breaking, bodies are failing, minds are confused, families are ruptured, Lord, come with your help and healing. As your church gathered here today, we give thanks for the saints of the past and the fruit they have borne in our community and beyond. Like them, help us to remain in you, 
that we may be fruitful and bring glory to your name. Through Jesus Christ, the true vine. Amen. So at this time, uh, Rachel is going to share with us a song by Jeremy Camp. It's entitled, Same Power. The scripture I'd like to share with you this morning is from the Gospel of John. It's chapter 15, verses 1 through 8 in the New International Version. It says this, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are, all, you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. 
If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So this morning I am continuing in my Lenten series based on these I am statements of Jesus. And for those, that you have, those of you who have been here for the last few weeks, you know that these statements are all coming from the Gospel of John, and I'm preaching them in the order that they appear. So, as you just heard from the scripture reading, uh, in this message today I'll be reflecting upon Jesus' statement of, I am the true vine. So I'd like to begin by unpacking this statement to help you maybe see it in a little different light and come to grow in understanding. And speaking of growing, the very first verse in the scripture begins with Jesus saying to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. So we have this image of of God who plants a begotten son named Jesus into the world at a certain moment in human history. But the scriptural context to the metaphor Jesus is using would have been immediately evident to his disciples. You see, the grapevine was an often used symbol of Israel. And lots of Old Testament passages speak of Israel being, being God's vineyard. And in fact, the great grapevine came to symbolize the nation of Israel, much like the eagle symbolizes America. Even the entrance to the temple provided a visual reminder. Over a giant doorway was a, in, 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 in uh, was carved, excuse me, a uh, large grape, cluster of grapes that was carved and covered in pure gold. And it said that the grapes uh, on this carving were the size of a person's head. And a replica of of the temple that we have uh, actually verifies this. So Jesus could have very well been standing under this carving before uttering his words, I am. And the implication was clear that Jesus is connected to Israel's strength. However, in our contemporary world today, we see many other types of plants all around us, and we may may even see ourselves in them. So continuing in this metaphoric analogy, the question becomes, what kind of plant are you? see something of ourselves in the analogy of these various plants. The most important plant to view ourselves as a part of is the one to which Jesus assigns himself. The grapevine is a perfect metaphor for Jesus because of its many different attributes, one of which is that it requires pruning. After referring to God as the gardener in verse 1, Jesus says in verse 2, He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. In Hampton Court, near London, there is a grapevine under glass. 
and it's about a thousand years old. But one root is at least two feet thick. And, and, and some of the branches are actually 200 feet long. And because of the skillful cutting and pruning, the vine produces several tons of grapes each year. And even though some of the smaller branches are 200 feet from the stem, they bear much fruit because they're joined to the vine and allow the life of the vine to flow through them. The same is true of the true vine, Jesus. In verse 4, he says, Remain in me, and I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. So in essence, uh, Jesus is saying here that we have no power to do anything worthwhile for the kingdom of God on our own unless we stay connected to him. This causes me to ref reflect on the chorus of uh, the centering song that Rachel just sang with us a few minutes ago. It says, the same power that rose Jesus from the grave, the same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks, the same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us, lives in us. Isn't that amazing to think about? Yeah, we often feel like we don't have, not only do we not have the power to perform miracles, we sometimes don't even think that we have the power to get through the day. But that's because we're not plugged into the source of our power. A missionary in Africa and his central mission had a generator to supply current to his church and rectory. And one day some natives from an outlying mission came to visit this pastor, and they noticed the electric light hanging from the ceiling of his living room. And they watched wide-eyed as the, the pastor uh, used the switch to turn the light on and off. And one of the visitors asked if he could have one of the bulbs. And so the priest, uh, thinking that he wanted it for sort of a trinket, gave him one of the extra bulbs. And then so uh, sometime later on, a, on another day to visit the outlying mission, the priest stopped at the man, uh, the hut of the man who had asked for the bulb. And so imagine his surprise when he saw the bulb hanging from an ordinary string. He had to explain to this man that he needed to have electricity and a wire to bring the current to the bulb. And so we, we may have a, an understanding smile at the 